God made you. And you're somebody special. You're somebody special. And you don't need anything. You don't need nothing. (laughs) I know that's not good English, but I'm just an old country boy. You don't need nothing (laughs) except what you have in Jesus Christ. If you're blessed with other things, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Secondly, he says you will run and not be weary. This is the middle age, folks. In other words, you won't get tired in uh, well-doing. You will have a race that is run before you, and you will run it with patience. Uh, Young people, one of the hardest things you will ever learn in your life is to be patient, to be patient, because we live in a now society. Today, when do you want it? Yesterday. (laughs) Uh, So... uh, You will run and not be weary if you trust God. And then he said, you will walk and not faint. That's us old folks who walk with a quiet walk with God as they near the gates of heaven. One of our own is walking a quiet walk with God today. His name is Howard Shoemaker. And Brother Howard is getting close to the gates of heaven. said to me the other day, preacher, uh, I, I want to go home and be with my Lord and see my Viola. I miss her so. And I said, Howard, I can't imagine how much you miss her. I said, I know you want to go. But Howard, you know, that's in God's timing. And when the timing is right, uh, He's going to take you. He looked at me with a gleam in His eye and He said, Yes, I know. I understand, Pastor. I understand. And then He stopped talking. And there was a period of silence, and he looked at me, and he said, Will you miss me when I'm gone, preacher? (laughs) And I said, Yes, Howard. Will you miss me? And he said, Yes, I will. What is Howard doing? He's taking a quiet, slow, determined walk as he approaches the gates of heaven. I'm going to tell you something. God said, You will walk, and you will not faint. You will run and not grow weary. And he's talking about the supernatural strength that he loves to give his children in a journey of life. Teenagers, I want to leave with you two of my favorite heroes of the Bible. Two of my favorite heroes. Hero number one is Joseph. A young man who came from the pit to the palace, from rags to riches, lived in purpose in the purpose of God in his life as a young man. Never wavered from that. Resisted temptation and was placed in a great big role of leadership. Brother sold him into slavery. God raised him out of that pit and put him in a palace. If you want to go places, young person, let me tell you how the ticket to get there. Go with God and he'll get you there. And it'll be meaningful. Anything you achieve of this world's goods is temporary. It will pass away. It will pass away. Hero number two is Daniel. At the young age of 15, he was taken into captivity. Into Babylon. But he kept his favor with God as a young boy. And God honored that. He did not compromise his faith nor his integrity. Young people, you will be tempted and are being tempted today and on the high school campus and the school campus that you go to 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 compromise your integrity. Don't do that. Don't do that. Keep your integrity and your faith. He was handpicked for government service and became God's spokesman. And I love this most of all about Daniel. His name means God is my judge. If you understand that God is God, He's everlasting, that He's your judge, it will make all the difference in the world of the choices that you make. Amen? It really will. It really will. His name literally meant, God is my judge. Daniel understood that. And he walked and he lived in that. He walked and he lived in that. Young people, here's my closing thought to you. God loves you, God wants you, and God wants you to live for Him. 
God has a purpose for your life. You may not see that now, but you'll discover it down the road if you'll put your trust and your faith in Him. God said to you in His Word this morning, you will fall, you will fail, but if you remember God, if you remember God, He is faithful. He is faithful. And God has never, nor shall He ever be, unfaithful to you. You have been unfaithful to Him. We have been unfaithful to Him. But He has never been unfaithful to us. God wants to use you. Listen, we've got to have in America some godly leaders for the future. I tell you, it's slim pickings right now in our world. It's sad. It's really sad. Our government is filled with deceit and mockery. And our government seems to be moving further and further from God and literally what they're doing. They're pushing God to the edge of their culture. That's exactly what they're doing. But I've got news for our government this morning. God may be pushed to the edge, but he will not stay on the edge for he is the God of this universe. And he will not camp around the edge, but he will find himself in the very center, in the very center. And the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Christ to the glory of God the Father. There's coming that day. Your life is precious. Your life is, is a marvelous creation of God. There's nobody like you. Some of your parents are saying, Amen. <laughs> no, but seriously, there's nobody like you. You are a unique creation of God. And God wants to use you. I want to ask you a question in closing. Will you let him use you? Will you let him use you? Middle-aged parents, will you let him use you? Older adults, will you let him use you? Grandparents, will you let him use you? God wants to use us for his glory and his majesty. We may falter, but... But if we know he's the everlasting God, we have something to cling to. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet in prayer. I'm going to ask the pianist to come and play softly a selection while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. The invitation is simply this. If you're here today lost outside of Jesus Christ, do not know him as Lord and Savior of your life, we want to invite you to come. Come down this aisle and give your heart and your life and your sins to Jesus Christ this morning. Confess your sins to Him. Repent of those. And the Bible says you'll become a child of God. Young person, this invitation is for you this morning. Adults, this invitation is for you. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, come and invite Him into your heart and into your life. As the piano's place. You just slip out and come. There'll be someone to pray here with you and to pray for you and to lead you into a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So don't delay. Just come. Maybe as a teenager, you've, you've wandered to the left of your experience of Jesus Christ. And you don't feel close to God as you once did. And you need in your heart to come and renew your vows of commitment to Jesus Christ. You come. And maybe you're here this morning and you need to unite with our church and you feel the pull of God's Holy Spirit to unite with our membership here at Rocky Hill Baptist Church. You come and make that commitment to God this morning and say, yes, Lord, I know that you're calling me here to be a witness for you, to be a part of God's family here at Rocky Hill Baptist Church. As we pray, as the pianist continues to play, you come. Let the Spirit of God speak to your heart this morning. Don't leave this place without letting God touch your life and to renew you and to refresh you and to restore you as His child. Young person, maybe you just want to come and pray for a friend of yours that you know that's not a Christian and you want to say, God, would you help me to lead my friend to Jesus Christ? You come and we'll help you pray to that end here this morning. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. He's not ashamed of you. You come. This altar is open. This altar is open. Adult, young parent, grandparent, teenager, you come. You come. And let God speak to your heart. Let God speak to your heart.